Hi guys and welcome in the next video. I'm back from vacation so we're back to programming. The today's video, um, actually the idea for the video came up after a consultation I had with uh, Andy and he asked me about like what does it really mean to be a robot programmer? So Andy is a student and he was considering uh, work in the future as a robot programmer, a robot engineer. But he asked me like that he doesn't really know what does it mean and like what does the robot pro programmer do and what are the career opportunities for us and like how can the path of our career look like. So I thought it's going to be a great idea to make a video and talk to you about like what options do we really have, what can we do as robot programmers and what is there for us in the, in the field. So let's get started. All right, so I kind of split that video into two parts where in the first part I'm going to talk a little bit about what are the options as a robot programmer are for us to like go through, follow through. And the second part is kind of like a, I would call it evolution of robot programmer. I know that's like something I came up with uh, and the names that are going to be shown there are also like something I came up with. I heard some of them, but uh, I kind of attached tasks to it. So it's going to be interesting as well. So hold tight until the end of the video. Okay, so first let's talk about what a robot programmer can do. So personally, I would say we can divide a robot programming work onto two fields. One of them is offline programming and the second part is online programming. And that probably is going to be the biggest difference uh, between robot programming. So offline robot programming is something that you will do mostly uh, at your home or in your office. And online robot programming is where you actually need to travel to a customer uh, that you will work in the field with the robot. But let's go a little bit deeper into it so you can understand uh, what are hidden under those names. So I will start with the offline robot programming. So when you do offline programming, that means uh, you can do either, I would say, engineering or simulation. Now, what I mean by engineering? Probably that is the least uh, heard for you guys, but that means you can actually work at the company that builds the robots and help them develop either the hardware or the software or maybe both for the robots. So you can be part of a design team that you're going to design a new casting for the robot that's going to be lighter so it will allow the robot to be lighter so the robot can move faster. Maybe you, you want to come up with some cool designs so you can uh, put the dress pack inside the robot so it has a hollow wrist and so on and so on and so on. When you do the software for them, that means you can work as a software developer and you're not going to do much of the programming, but you'll be more of a, let's say, IT guy that's going to work on mathematical models that are used for the path calculation, maybe some software options that you buy with the robots that will include, for example, in Fanuc material handling, maybe some tech packages if we're talking about KUKA. So that will be something that you might be doing as, let's say, an engineer for hardware or software at the robot manufacturing. Now, if we talk about simulation, uh, with the simulation, probably we can split it into two, maybe three divisions, where one of them is going to be called virtual commissioning. Well, virtual commissioning is going to be the most advanced and virtual commissioning is basically where you are taking a part and working with a team that is going to run the station in a virtual environment. That means you're going to create everything like it's going to look like in the future on the field you're going to put it into the simulation software and uh, you're going to program the robot if you're the robot programmer controls guys or plc guys are going to do the plc and then in that simulation software you're going to simulate everything and all of this is going to make one big simulation how a station could work so as I said over there, the virtual commissioning is the big package. And then when you go a little bit lower, I would say then you can do simulation and like reachability studies uh, and basically path programming. So for out of the uh, reachability study and basically the studies about the station and the simulation, 
you put this into the virtual commissioning and then you have like a full uh, work of an offline robot programmer. So I would say that will be probably uh, enough for offline. And now let's move into the online. So online for most of you guys is going to mean working in a field. Now there will be two types of work in a field. One is going to be stationary and other one is going to be commissioning and traveling to the customers. So depending what type of work you're interested in, either you want to travel a lot or you want to stay in one place, you can choose a work of an online programmer and then pick one of the paths. The tasks that you're going to do when you're stationary or you're traveling are pretty much the same. The only difference is the place you work at. So you are either going to work at your workplace or just travel around the world or around the country. And what are the tasks of the online programmer? I would say we can divide it into two and then those two will merge into one more uh, category. So those two will be uh, robot commissioning and robot programming. They kind of go together because they have to, but uh, I will tell you about, about it more when we talk about the uh, robot programmer like steps evolution. So that will make it a little bit clearer for you. So commissioning is going to be basically setting up the robot. So uh, as the robot will come into the factory, you will come, you will, you will verify if you got the correct robot, if uh, all you get all of the software needed, all of the hardware needed, and so on and so on. Then you're going to take care about uh, the something called from German IBN, which goes for Inbetriebnahme, which basically means startup. So that is when you're going to load uh, like default programs to the robot that were pre-programmed by the offline guys. You're going to load uh, the macros and so on and so on. You're going to commission all of the I.O. So you're going to do the I.O. Uh, mapping. You're going to do the I.O. verification with the PLC. So you will prepare the robot for being moved and programmed by the robot programmers. So this is also robot programming, but uh, that is more of or less let's say stationary for the robot so the robot will stay in one place and you're going to do all of that you're going to make sure that electrical connections are okay you're going to make sure of course with help of the electricians or not depending uh, that the io matches that all of the macros work that all of the application works that will also include commissioning applications in many cases like uh, grippers to make sure all of the valves are actuating that the macros that you created work with those uh, actuators like commissioning a spot gun and so on and so on. So this is going to be uh, commissioning. And then the second part is basically programming. That's where you actually verify the programs that you get from offline guys or you're going to create your own programs for the robot paths. That's going to be uh, adding all of the working macros onto your program. So basically making the robot move. So I would like I said, I will divide it into commissioning where you have the robot stationary and program everything over there so it's ready to be moved. And then you have the programming part where you actually program the robot to make all of its movement. Now, I said there is one more category and that category for me is going to be applications. And that is something I always say to all of the guys I work with or teach that everybody forgets about applications because Robot programming and touching up the points is not really programming. That's just robot driving. So the real beauty of robot programming comes when the applications uh, come in our way. So of course, even with the basic applications like handling, you can learn a lot, develop a lot of techniques, how to pick and place, how to program pick and place programs, how to verify your grippers, how to make modifications to your grippers, and a lot, a lot, a lot of things that we can talk about later if you want. So this is the secret for me of robot programming is handling the robot applications. Because guys, remember that robots by itself won't do anything, right? You need to mount something, the end effector on the robot. And the, the truth is that the end effector is the thing that's actually doing something. The robot is just handling it, like it's holding it in its hand, let's say. And it's moving that, that effector somewhere, that application somewhere that, that it's possible to do something. Weld, uh, glue, uh, the dispense, handling, whatever else. So this is the key. This is where you're going to develop your skills, how to work with 
applications, how to make the applications better. Because programming, the path guys, like after the time, it becomes very easy. But the application is what really is making the fun in our work, in my opinion. And that's where you're going to learn the most and that's where you're going to become an expert after knowing the robot applications, not the robot programming. Because I will show you in a second uh, why I say this and what I mean by this. So to sum up, the options that you have as a robot programmer is you have the offline programming, you have the online programming. Probably you're going to ask me about what everybody wants to know, how much the robot programmer makes. Well guys, that depends where do you live, that depends on your skills, that depends on how long have you been working, and so on and so on. Definitely, uh, if we talk about offline or online, the online programmers usually will make more money than offline. That's because it requires you to travel, that requires you to uh, go to places, that requires you to dealing with the stuff, that you're not prepared with. Uh, offline programming is basically where you sit at the office, you work on the simulations, so there is no extra cost of you traveling somewhere, okay? If you are an offline programmer, maybe you need to go to the site to load the programs and verify your programs if they work. But overall, definitely uh, traveling and working in the field will make you more than just sitting uh, at the office. You can just uh, Google basically how much the robot programmer makes and you'll see it'll be from two. And that depends basically of the things I said. Are you doing offline programming? Are you just commissioning? Are you working on the new line? Are you going to a construction? Many, many things uh, that I talk about depends on your salary. Now let's talk about the evolution of a robot programmer. So I don't know, that's something I came up with. Uh, I think it's a good way of describing how do we learn, how do we progress in our work, and how do we become an expert. So I divided a uh, robot programmer into like three phases. Phase number one is called robot driver. So that came out of the fact that basically when you will start robot programming, the first thing that you're going to do is going to be verifying the existing paths, making slight modifications to the existing paths, and doing backups. So basically, you're literally driving the robot. You're going to take it, you're going to step the program forward, you're going to step the program backward, maybe change one point, and that basically is going to be it because you're learning, you're understanding the robot motions, you're understanding the frames, you're trying to understand how the linear works, how the joint works, how the speed affects the robot motion, and so on and so on. So you're going to drive the robot you're not going to create some sophisticated macros or super complicated robot paths. You're basically going to know what you're working with. Like with any tool that you ever work with, you're going to grab it, examine it, learn it, understand it, so you can go further because you understand more of the capabilities of that tool. In our case, that's going to be a robot. So after that's done, then you're becoming a robot programmer, I would say. Also, one thing I want to mention about the robot driver, that's where uh, you will fit into the uh, online programming and the programming part, not the commissioning. Then when you are becoming a robot programmer, that means you already have the robot driving capabilities and you're trying to do more. So when you took at the graph, that means you're able to also commission the robot. So for me, the robot programmer is a person that will get a robot take it out of the box, well, maybe not you, but they will take it out of the box, mount it on the floor and say, well, now it's your time to make it move. So that's where you come in, that's where you're going to uh, turn it on, turn the power on, see what's up, speak with the controls guys to decide like how the robot is going to work, what it's going to do, and you're going to uh, make some assumptions about the inputs and outputs that you will use to communicate you'll be able to set it up, you'll be able to communicate with the PLC, uh, see all of the devices on your robot, so you will see inputs and outputs, communicate with them, create a program, so you'll be able to uh, basically do the turnkey solution. That means somebody gives you the robot and then you'll give them back a solution where they push a start button and everything works. And then the last thing is, for me, a uh, robot expert. So in order to become an expert, in my opinion, you need to know the 
robot driving, robot programming, and then the key to, for me, robotics, which is robotic applications. The moment, guys, that you're going to know applications, that means knowing them very well and knowing how they work, that's where you get a very big value. And basically, knowing specific applications is going to make you more or less money. Because, like I said, everybody can do the movements, but understanding how the application works and program the robot according to the application, because that's something that many people forget, is that we are making the programming of the application, not really programming of the robot. Because like I said, the robot by itself won't do much. It has to have something on it that will do the work. So basically it's kind of like you as a cook, right? That will give you a spoon or something and that's not going to do much, yeah? Okay, you will see that you have a pot or you're going to stir it or whatever. But if you don't know what's happening over there, then you're kind of like, okay, somebody will tell you, okay, just keep mixing it, right? So that's kind of how I see a robot programmer. So he knows that there is application. He knows that, okay, I have a spoon, so probably I can stir, I can pour, pour the soup or whatever it is uh, in the pot to the plates. Uh, and that's how I see a programmer. When you are an expert, that means when you have that spoon, you know exactly what's in front of you, you understand it. So you know if there has to be something changed, you know how much you have to pour, you know if it's something is already ready to pour, and if there are some, some things that has to be changed in that pot, maybe add salt, add pepper, add some spices, whatever. This is the application, and this is where all of the fun of robot programming for me comes from. So there is tons of robotic application that you can choose from. Starting from even the simplest handling, you would not believe how many things you can do over there in order to make the application better, faster, or more reliable. Going from spot welding, MIG welding, stud welding, dispensing, a lot of applications. You guys, trust me, there is too much to know by one person. So that's where you're becoming the expert. When you know all of the programming parts, aspects of the robot and you're understanding how the application should work like. This is the, basically for me, the key of becoming a robot programmer. Because most of the cases, guys, most of the tasks that are happening after the robot is being programmed is cycle time optimization and quality. Cycle time optimization means playing with the robot's path, playing with the robot logic, as well as changing the quality. We're going to talk about cycle time optimization later, what techniques I use and what you can use uh, as a programmer to make robot faster without touching up the robot path. But then the application is really the key, in my opinion, of becoming the expert in robot programming. Because you might know one application very good and that's going to be, that's going to be more worth than knowing two types of robots. It, of course, depends where do you work, where, where do you work, what is your work environment, but that's how I will divide the uh, robot programming evolution into those three steps. All right, that'll be all for today, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, give it a like, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.